we have a new motherboard. So this is the motherboard we've chosen for the Unray build. Um, so it's a, uh, I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> so there we go, that's the name of the motherboard anyway, I don't can pronounce it. Um, I've chosen it for the um, Intel chip we're gonna be using this, which is called, um, I, I, Intel Core 9, 16 um, cores. And obviously uh, we're supporting Windows 11, so it's got the TPN support for this. So using Unraid, we'll be able to uh, virtualize Windows 11, which is great. It's got built-in Wi-Fi 6. I'm not sure if we're going to be using Wi-Fi 6, but we are going to be using the Ethernet that comes with it, which is 2.5. So let's have a look what's in the box, because it's got some awesome features on it and supports um, MVNE drives, and it's got lots of ports for S SSD as well. So let's have a look what we've got in the box. So it's a, it's like a Rock, um, Rock Strike, I can't even pronounce it, uh, Z790F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. I basically, when I chose this, I chose it for a... Um, it supports up to four NVMe drives in it, which is great. It's got lots of USB, -C, um, US, uh, not USB, lots of SATA ports. So if I wanted a lot more SSD storage, I can have that as well. Um, it does support DDI5 um, RAM, which I think we've got DDI5 RAM as well. Um, it's Windows 11 ready, so that means we can do virtualization. Um, and it's also got USB-C on here as well. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi 6, which I probably won't use because I'll be using the network um, interface on this, which is 2.5 gigabit networking, goes with the switch that I purchased as well. So yeah, so, so look what we got in the box. It's very actually, it's very heavy. Um, so you can tell the quality. I mean, this, this board was over 300 quid um, and you can feel the difference in weight. So I don't know if that relates to more you spend, the heavier the board gets, but it's gonna be quite a heavy machine. So inside the board, so we've got enough room for this. So let's take the components out. So we've got um, bits in the side here. So what we've got here, we've got, um, that's the Wi-Fi cable antennae as well, which I'm not sure we're gonna use this. I'm not sure if actually Wi-Fi 6 is supported on Unray, I'm not sure, but we can fire up and give it a go and see if it is. I probably won't be able to connect to Wi-Fi 6 because I've only got, um, I haven't got Wi-Fi 6 um, wireless here at the moment. So here's the main board. Take out the box, and we'll have a look at that in a sec. So what we've got underneath all this lot, tons of stuff. So we've got um, some screws there, another little pad thing, a little pad thing there as well. We've got a, oh, key ring, comes with a key ring, fantastic. Um, manual book, and yeah, have little bits and pieces, take all that box, and we'll see what's got in there. And the other one, we've got um, cable ties, uh, another screw, and oh, comes with some, uh, there you go, hard drive leads, which is perfect, because I'm gonna actually buy some, because I'm not sure if I've got enough to go in this build, but yeah, go. So, close that off. And we've got another specs on here. So, supports up to four, as I said, four PCI, four M.2. Um, uh, PCI slots, Q releases, Wi-Fi as I said anyway, but yeah, so let's have a close look at the board. So the board, the, that is really heavy, a lot more heavy around this area because I think it's because of the heat sinks it's got on there as well, which is really nice. So let's get out the case. Oh, and this has got a lot of RGB on it as well. So it's, it's gonna literally look great in the case. We've got a nice see-through uh, glass case for this can show off the RGB on it as well. The actual, um, we're going to be using a radiator coolant, coolant um, on this, so the header itself has um, LED lights on it and also has a temperature light as well. You can see the temperature of the CPU or the fan speed of the pump, basically, which is quite cool. So under these plates here, yeah, I assume is, oh, it's got like um, a put-off thing here. Under these plates is the SSD mounts, it's got um, four slots for the memory. So we're using um, Kingston uh, Fury, um, they're 64 gig kit and a DDR5, so that's gonna go into this system here. We've got the Intel chip to go here. Uh, so what we got in here, we got main, main power here, we've got a USB port here, so we might put the Unraid boot drive there instead, instead on the outside of the case. We've got two, four, six USB um, so not USB, 
um, SATA ports on the front here. We've got fan headers, system fan headers, and so forth. I wonder if we've got any, I think that might be RGB headers. I'm not sure, I'll have a look at the instructions anyway. Um, we've got some more bits down the side here. I assume these are case kind of thing, fan as well. So it's got a big, small PCI, uh, long PCI for graphics card. We, we don't, not gonna actually have a graphics card in this because this already comes with onboard graphics, which I, hence why I've chosen this board. Because with Unraid, um, you don't need um, a fast GPU in it unless you'll be doing, dedicating a, the um, graphics card to a VM, which we're not gonna be doing that. We're just gonna use onboard graphics. So I said it's got 2.5 gigabit networking port here, Wi-Fi 6, all, all the normal audio stuff there, two USB-Cs, and we've got lots of USB ports here as well. Um, and we've got obviously HDMI, and we've got the DP um, port as well. And we've got buttons here to clear the CMOS, um, BIOS flush, flash or something like that as well. So yeah, it's quite nice. I mean, this, as I said, this is really heavy. The heaviest part of this board is this section here because this has got a really nice, really nice heat sink here, which is over the, all the caps around that makes it. So this is gonna be interesting because this is gonna be switched on for 365 days a year. And the other gaming boards I brought in the past for Unraid has worked very well, not had any issues with it. And it's gone through probably about five years of continuous use. So this is gonna be really interesting, testing this board to its limits. Because normally when you run it as a gaming rig, you switch it off when you don't use it, you switch it on when you use it. I know get people can game on it for hours and hours and hours, but um, we'll be using this as a non ray system, which will be switched on for constantly for the next three years at least. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, how well this holds up. But obviously it's got some great components on here and we've got, and we've got great heat sinks as well. So it's gonna take off a lot of heat. We've got some nice fans in the case that'll blow across this. So it should keep it lovely and cool um, while it's in use as well. But yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll start getting this built together um, and have a look what we've got inside. So we've got some weirds. There you go. Oh, there you go. Look, little press button there releases this little connection here. That's really cool. I need to put it back. <laughs> so it's got a kind of a push cable that pulls it off. That's interesting. And we've got screws here to, we might take some of these apart actually. Let's take some of these off. Yep, that fits. See where all the SSD, not SSD, MVNE goes. Because we can probably actually install them right now. So there we go, so we take that plate off there. We've got two MVNE slots here. And I do believe there's another, I think there's another one or another, might be another one underneath here, I'm not sure. I know there's um, quite a few here. So yeah, another MVNE slot here. And it's got four, so it's one, two, three, so I wonder if the other one's actually underneath here. I'm sure it's got four, <laughs> but there you go. So, trying to see what, what spec. There you go, there's little notches as well for it to go down, which is nice, little locking bits. I like this, this is the little lock, locking bits. You don't have to put any screws in it. That locks your NV&E uh, straight in there. But why we got it off, we'll actually install it. So, there we go, NV&E. So we install the first one. So it goes in there. At an angle, just like installing RAM. And do that. And then we pull the little lever around. And then, then lock it in place. There you go, nice and easy. That, I prefer that. You can tell when you've got a decent motherboard, you got a proper lock locking nuts for your for your for your MV and E, um, which helps a lot. And let me take the other one. Oh, so for testing purposes, we're just going to install two MV and E um, modules for the moment. Uh, make sure that's, that's it. There we go. Lock it in place. Um, got a third slot here, and I'm sure there's a fourth slot here as well. So we're gonna just gonna install two um, for the moment. 
Um, switch short plate back, so it's that one there. These these are very very heavy as well. And also you've got um thermal pad here, which we can take off. Because once it's installed, we're not gonna put it up. That's the way because I know uh MV need can get quite warm, so this is the way to absorb the heat up onto this. And this is really nice and thick and very heavy as well. So it's just it's definitely gonna be keeping these pretty much cool. And because we've got some decent fans in the in the new case, it should keep them um, very cool when they're running. I've got that in the right place. Don't think the screws are holding up. I think I'll put it down too quick. So get them in the right place. And that one should have fall back into no. It's missing it. Okay. There you go. Make sure they're done and tighten off. into place so there you go so that's going to keep them lovely and cool by absorbing the heat off and with the nice fans blown across the top it should keep it lovely lovely and cool itself but they're in place it does push down quite a bit on the these memory bits here hopefully they're in place so yeah and then we got the um ddr5 ram here so um Make sure we put them in, in the right order. So, in the specific order, I think they're very much. And uh, DDR RAM. So, this is a 64 gig kit, um, DDR5. And I can't remember what speed I got. I think I got the, the, the maximum I could get for this main board without going too much. And the good thing about these, these RAM is they also got RGB on it. So RGB at the top here. So they should look really nice in the, in the system. So I... S Quite a tight fit going, oh, good. That's it, quite a tight fit. Got in that side. Yep. Oh, there you go. That's gone in. Another one. Very tight slots these ones are. As I say, this board can support up to 128 gig. So if I want to install another set of these going to 128 gig, um, then I can. But obviously, to be honest, I've only done 64 gig on the system because I don't think we need any more RAM than that. So they're going to be running probably about four VMs. Um, so I think that's, that's going to be plenty of RAM, 64 gig. The old system is only 32 gig. So this is also a massive improvement of more RAM. I don't think we're going to need any more than um, 64 gig in this case. But there you go. We'll install the CPU um, on another build because I need to um, get the water cooler sorted as well and prepped. Um, yeah, and, get, and then we can install that. So there you go. So, so far, we've got the NVMe installed. We've got the RAM installed. On the next video coming up very soon, we'll actually do the um, CPU installation, we'll do the water cooler installation as well. I wanna keep these videos very small and punchy, not too long if I can. Uh, and then, then finally we'll be able to put it into this case and then start installing Unraid. So if you like this video, thumbs up if you like this video. Um, please do leave a comment below if you've got any questions on this Unraid build itself. And don't forget that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video very soon.
Cheers. <laughs> Here at SMJ Media Group, we are a non-profit company supporting local businesses by making fun media content. If you like our content and would like to support us, please go to buyusacoffee.com slash smjmediagroup and buy us a coffee.